So say we all. It's time for Science! Science. Welcome to Sci Friday on Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert in studio with my best friend, my wife, and the Skywatch TV science editor, Sharon K. Gilbert. Hi, sweetie pie. Hi, love. I love you without the beard. We're still getting emails and questions <laughs> yeah. about the beard. We had quite a discussion over lunch today. The only By the vote... way, Battlestar Galactica. Yes. For those yes. who are wondering where that's from, Battlestar Galactica, the reboot. The reboot, yes. The, the only vote that matters is yours. So. Uh. Uh, well, a lot to talk about and a wide variety of things to talk about There's this week. Everything from mind hacking to the uh, this, this quaking earth on which we live. Oh, so. I know. And the Lord of the Rings, that's even thrown in there. And, and board games. So lots of stuff to talk about. One story that uh, we could probably open <laughs> with is if you are prone to get migraines, which mm. I've had them, I've had maybe a 15, 16 migraines in my life and and they are terrible. I don't ever want to have those have ever happen again. Mm. But if you are prone to that, and some women, some men, some people are prone to those on a daily basis practically, and it really debilitates you, there is a, a, a study going on for an implant that will send a, an electric impulse mm -hmm. to a part of your brain that will theoretically stop the headache. Hmm tiny implant in the forehead just under the skin and a battery which clips to your ear and then yeah. sends pulses to it wirelessly. Yeah. And so. the control group will be that uh, the, the battery is not hooked up to the implant. So you it will be testing whether or not people imagine that mm -hmm. they feel better because they've gone through some sort of emotion. It, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really good study design, but it's a very small study. So who knows what, but this moving toward a cyborg kind of life, the, the alternative to finding maybe more natural ways to deal with a headache mm -hmm. instead of, oh, I think I'm just going to augment myself by putting an implant in my brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are times when, um, and as you know, I'm prone to sinus headaches from time to time. Mm, and I've gotten I where I can manage those pretty well, usually with um, uh, a decongestant spray. Or chocolate. Chocolate helps for some reason. I just found that milk chocolate uh, you know, and maybe it's just a, an excuse. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, milk chocolate and a, and a cola it's for a some reason seems to help. Fix, yeah. yeah. But um, there, there are uh, other things out there. In the past, we've had some success using peppermint oil, mm -hmm. uh, heated peppermint oil, mm -hmm. which uh, it sort works. of blasts it open. It, it does. It's, it can be really potent. Um, but uh, you're right. We, we do seem to be looking at more invasive methods toward improving what it means to be human. In fact, I think that we're going to, and, and, you know, Wesley J. Smith writes about this all the time, the legal aspects to transhumanism. And at one point, do we have to redefine what a human is? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've talked about this on, on this program. Right. Uh, but you and I have also talked about it on our, our podcasts for a long time. Uh, is Are we going to move to a future where young kids won't be considered human, but chimpanzees will? Mm-hmm. The uh, personhood theory yeah. that uh, rights are only granted uh, based on a uh, meeting a certain minimum level of cognition after which you are defined as a person, which mm -hmm. would mean that small children who are, say, under the age of two uh, would not be considered persons or adults who yeah. suffered brain trauma yeah. might not be considered persons and thus not entitled to protection under the law, whereas, uh, say, dolphins, uh, uh, dachshunds, of course. Yeah. But they're, you know, Everybody knows that. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, but At least that's uh, what ours tells us. <laughs> and certain types of apes, chimpanzees and gorillas, yeah. would be considered persons under the law, whereas uh, there are humans who would not be protected because they were no, you know, not cognitive. Mm -hmm. Or uh, an artificial intelligence. Or an qualify. artificial intelligence would qualify, right. So th these are things that, uh, to many viewers, you, they, this may sound crazy to you, but there are legal scholars who are having debates on these issues as we speak. So yes. this is not something we should ignore because this is a fundamental change in what it means to be human and a fundamental um, redefinition of God's design for yeah. us. That's the big problem for, for you and me. And I know that uh, we, we tend to try to, to see everything through God's eyes. It's a difficult task because the truth is you and I are human and it's, it's almost impossible to imagine Mm -hmm. how God see th sees things, but we can read in Scripture enough evidence that shows that He's very concerned about who we are and what we're trying to do to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're trying to redesign His design, right. which He called good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, humanity is, um, uh, he is unique, it is special, and human life is sacred because we have been designed in mm. his image as his imagers, his yes. moral agents on this earth. Yep. And that applies to us regardless of whether we are 
um, genius level IQ or whether we are uh, infants still in the cradle. Well, I'm glad you said the thing about the IQ because I suspect that that's something else that we're going to see with regard to transhumanism, that if you have a child who is born that doesn't qualify for personhood mm -hmm. because the IQ is too low right. or there's a birth defect that is no longer accepted as being qualifying for human, and i got to tell you some of the sweetest, most wonderful humans I have known in my lifetime have been ones who may fall under that rubric mm -hmm. at some point in the near future. Right. And and I would hate it that these children, these wonderful children created in the Lord's image, but failing a human standard, right. that, that they would be considered less than they are. They yeah. are just as special as anybody, as Albert Einstein, as yeah. anybody else. It, 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 how, how is that for hubris? This just occurred to me. How is that for hubris that, that God would welcome these, these special children with open arms? And Jesus, in fact, said, you know, come unto me as little children. Let yes. them, uh, if you don't enter the kingdom as a little child, you will not enter the kingdom. Yes. Um, and yet we as humans are willing to reject them and cast them out because of perceived defects or here in the West over the last uh, you know, 40 years or so since Roe v. Wade, just because they happen to be inconvenient. Yes, that, that's really a lot of it. And inconvenience can be uh, a child still in the womb or a child yep. in the crib. Right. You know, I'm sorry, but I've got dreams. I want to, you know, I've got a career and you're really just sort of dragging me down. Most parents don't feel that way, no. but more and more there are parents who are being pressured to achieve uh, you know, to climb a ladder that has been designed by their bosses. So what if you have a child like that and the parents are very concerned that this child will not qualify for personhood? Well, if you do the genetic, you know, enhancement, right. we can fix that. Mm -hmm. And and so there may be parents who do that. There may be parents who, because they want a competitive child who can jump higher, who can run faster, mm -hmm. who can think more clearly and more cognitively that uh, they, they will undergo genetic enhancement as a child. Yeah. When you don't get to make that choice for yourself, your parents are making that choice. Right. And there are other aspects of this too. In fact, there's an article that was uh, just out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but it's, it's similar to other articles that we've mm -hmm. talked about in the past about uh, uh, a, a uh, uh, a senior fellow for technology and national security for a think tank in the Washington, D.C., wrote a, an op-ed piece um, on um, how we need a species-wide conversation on the future of genetic enhancement. Yeah. Because not only do you um, run into the, the uh, potential liability of enhancing a child in a way that, uh, as an adult, the child decides he didn't want, and then the child comes back to mm -hmm. sue you, but I, I think on a, on a broader uh, 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 issue is who would be able to afford these enhancements. Yeah. We talk about the nature of our society today and um, you know, study out this past week showing that more than half the adults under 30 in America reject the idea of capitalism because it's unfair. You've got the 1% who've got you know, mm -hmm. the majority of the resources and the rest of the 99% struggling to get by. Well, guess who's going to be able to afford these genetic enhancements? The 1%. Absolutely. It's going to uh, take us back to the old days of king and serf. Right. Because uh, and, and the transhumanists and, and many of the transhumanists are very nice people and they truly have the goals of improving mankind. They don't believe in Jesus Christ as Savior right. for the most part, but they, they want to find a way to better humankind. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. The problem is they, their dream is that this will be an egalitarian society. It will not. Yeah, that, that is It'll naive. be the haves and the have-nots. What, what boggles my mind is how people who are so intelligent as to conceive of ways that our biology might somehow be enhanced mm -hmm. beyond the limits imposed on us by God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to, and yet to be so naive about the working of the world to think that somehow once this technology is somehow achieved, that it will be available to everybody. Yeah. It, no, it won't. It will it'll, not. It will be the 1% who gets it. And there's a belief that somehow during the world of enhanced humans, there will be no scarcity any longer. Ble plenty of water, plenty of food. I don't know if they're thinking we're all bots, you know, robots so we don't eat anymore. I'm really not sure how they're thinking that. Maybe, maybe the thinking is we're so 
cognitively enhanced yeah. that we think of great ways to improve our food supply. And we'll all be nice and share with everybody. Everybody gets to play with our toys. Humans are sinful. We selfish. have sinful natures. Yeah. And there will always be individuals who want to gain power over the rest. Right. That's why Jesus said the poor you will always have with you. It's a sad truth. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, that is absolutely true. And again, that is a, a, such a, a huge to me, that's the elephant in the room. And I, I am just aghast that, that transhumanists, for the most part, just don't even see it. They pretend it's not there. It's the same mistake that socialists made and continue to make. Mm-hmm. Um, that they, they recognize that under a capitalist system, humans are basically selfish. There are some people who try to take from other people so they can have more. <laughs> but the problem is not with capitalism. The problem is with the human Heart. Exactly, because if you think that s- socialism or even communism is somehow right. going to fix it, you've never visited communist Russia. Mm-hmm. My sister did in the, at the height of communist Russia, and she said it was the craziest world to, to observe because you still had the oligarchs. Mm-hmm. You still had people who had lots and lots of money and power. And in fact, that's one way they could co- coerce uh, individuals to do what the state wanted them to do because we'll give you a bump up. We'll mm-hmm. get, you'll get to go to this other stratosphere, this other uh, level of society. Mm-hmm. But she, she was at a hotel once and she called for, uh, because the light was out in the hallway. And she felt a little nervous about that because it's strange, totally strange sure. culture. And she said like 10 people arrived to replace the bulb because that's how they managed to give jobs to everybody. <laughs> that sounds like Chicago when I was growing <laughs> up. They literally had guys who were on the city payroll to go around and wipe off the signs that said no parking. Oh, my god! guy with a rag just go. Uh, ah, well, that's not going to change even if somehow humanity manages to transform into humanity 2.0, becoming cyborgs or dis embodied intelligences in a cosmic mainframe that won't fix the problem of the human heart Um, and that's why skywatch tv and defender films produced the telly award winning documentary film inhuman which we highly recommend coming up we're going to talk about this earth on which we live it uh it's breathing more straight ahead as skywatch tv continues with sci friday to celebrate the release of nita horn's inspiring new book no fences Skywatch TV would like you to tell your story, because after all, even if you don't think so, you actually have a story. Send in your story, and we are going to choose the 10 best, and they'll be published for Christmas release in an anthology of those stories, along with the book that you uh, buy that is actually only $19.95, am Mm -hmm. I right on that? That's correct. For free! Tom Horn, crazy guy, he's throwing in a journal which on its own, these most of these retail for $20 on their own. So this journal is to help you start writing your story. Mm-hmm. When you buy the book, not only are you going to be uh, enrolled in this and you can send in your story, but you'll get a plastic pony, you'll mm-hmm. get a journal of your own, and the proceeds from the book are going to help fund the studio we're building for Skywatch Women. Mm -hmm. And Nita Horn is going to be one of our panel members. The 10 authors who are selected for the anthology published by Defender Publishing in time for Christmas will also receive a $500 cash prize. And that'll go a long way at Christmas time, won't it? (laughs) Yes, it will. Even if your story is not one of those selected for the anthology, if you've taken the time to write your story, you've left a legacy for your children and for your grandchildren. Amen to that. For complete instructions and uh, details on this uh, opportunity, please log on to skywatchtv.com slash no fences. It's Sci Friday on Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert, along with Sharon Gilbert. Hi, honey. Don't forget to check out our uh, Facebook page where we discuss these uh, issues that we bring up today, and we'll bring the menu across here rather than trying to remember it all from memory because my memory's not been cognitively enhanced with uh, plugins <laughs> or anything. Uh, you'll find us there. I'm glad. I prefer you just the way you are. <laughs> and you can find us also, of course, uh, on our Roku channel, the Skywatch TV channel on Roku. If you have a Roku device and haven't added Skywatch TV to your device, log on to Skywatch. WatchTV.com slash Roku for instructions. Um, Mount boy. Etna has been filmed and it looks in the animation and it's just the, the various photos that have been put together. It looks like it's breathing. The, it's amazing. And we'll run the animation here while we're talking so you can see what we're discussing. Now, the, the movement 
Uh, this is from NASA. It, right. By it, the way. Is, is really enhanced. We're talking about, uh, you know, less than 20 centimeters, which is less than an inch. But still, the fact that that much ground is moving up and down in the span of uh, years. Yes. Uh, when you see it this way, time compressed and with the uh, differences in elevation yeah. enhanced by these colors, it really is startling. It is startling. And I, I'm sure that somewhere, you know, folks who are big, big believers in, you know, Mother Earth and Earth, Mother Earth and Gaia yeah. being sentient beings that uh, they're <laughs> Look, she's breathing. Mm. Uh, no, this is just showing that uh, what the incredible design that the Lord made. The fact that our Earth is made in a way that the 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 the, the crust itself can actually expand and contract mm -hmm. that easily without having to go into an eruption, which brings me to a couple of stories that I just found fascinating along this same idea. And one of them is the idea that the magma, the molten, you know, uh, layer underneath the Earth's mantle, that it is moving 10 times faster than scientists previously thought. Uh, this was sent, uh, hat tip to George who, uh, George Brewer, who sent this to us. Thank you very much. And if you want to mm -hmm. send us uh, stories, send it to Cy Friday at skywatchtv.com. And this story, I think, is fascinating. Uh, the, the quote, the money quote for me was this one. And it's, um, the surface of the earth, this is a quote, the surface of the earth evolves much quicker when the currents of the magma move faster. Well, the surface of the earth evolving, to use his word, mm -hmm. that's when earthquakes and volcanoes right. actually move subduction zones and, and uh, plates against each other right. and cause mountains to appear and go away. Disappear. The thing that I found stunning is that the, um, the surface of the earth, because of these changes, moves up and down uh, with the way they put it in the article, bobs up and down on top of this base, this ocean of magma. Underneath. Breathe nothing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bobs up and down by as much as five kilometers over the course of now, of course, the official timeline accepted by the scientific community is millions of years. Um, there's some reason to believe that time may be slowing down and what we perceive as millions of years may only be thousands. Well, but that, still. that's true. That's a Josh Peck thing. But, the but question, five kilometers up and down, yeah, that's that, like three that, miles up I and know, down. That's a lot. You think about the fact that you and I are sitting here in a studio and you at home, you're watching and you feel like you're just sitting nice and still. Nothing the ever truth changes. is that we're, we're yeah. just flying through this uh, galaxy yep. and uh, the Lord God created us in a way that we don't perceive it. That's, that's very true. How on earth could that have evolved that we wouldn't perceive that motion? That, that, that's, I, I don't know. But of course, I still can't figure out why when you've got a fly inside your car on the highway, <laughs> why it doesn't get splatted against the back windshield. So... <laughs> I'm no help. Why don't you get splattered? I mean, that's the question. <laughs> well, because I'm wearing my seatbelt. <laughs> oh, true. Very true. <laughs> well, the Earth's mantle is moving, and of course, because we talked about volcanoes. By the way, Mount Etna, uh, according to that article, the last big explosion was mm -hmm. probably about 30 years or so be before Christ's first right. arrival. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that it appears to be waking up? And we've seen lots and lots of stories yes. about uh, volcanoes erupting, threatening to erupt. Mount mm -hmm. St. Helens is starting yeah, to in fact, move again. I uh, talked about this just the other day, that 130 earthquakes over yeah. the last couple of months. They're relatively detected. small, but this is how they realized before right. that it was going to go bluey. Right. They said the magma chamber is repressurizing. And the yeah. last time it went bluey was 1980, of course, yeah. when uh, it, it knocked the top thousand foot off the mountain and killed and 57 I people. I remember that year really well. That was the year that I was on in, on tour with the gospel group. And we were there standing not that far from Mount St. Helens and, and taking pictures of mm -hmm. it. It hadn't blown yet. So somewhere I've got a picture of Mount St. Helens before she blew. Wow. Well, it's, it's, um, a, a bit nerve-wracking, a, a, a uh, seismologist, in fact, the head of the Southern California Earthquake Center, um, said that uh, the southern part of the San Andreas Fault is like a tightly coiled spring. Mm -hmm. He used the words locked and loaded. Um, and they believe that if it were to go, and they said normally they see a quake, a major quake, along those sections of the uh, the, the San Andreas Fault, about every 150 years. Well, the last major quake was 1857. It's so, way overdue. So it's overdue. Yeah. And when it goes, they estimate um, 
oh, $200 billion in damages, uh, tens of thousands of deaths. Los Angeles without major city services for over six months. Imagine Los Angeles, that metro area, without sewer or water for yeah. six months. Um, it could really be a disaster. But then when I talked to Stan Deo, uh, our, our friend Stan, who um, we'll see out in July at the uh, Prophecy Conference, he said the thing that really concerns seismologists is the Juan de Fuca plate off the coast of Oregon. Yeah. He said if that goes, and he said it is also overdue. They estimate a magnitude nine, which could send a tsunami. He said based on records and archeological digs of uh, Native American sites in Oregon and Washington state that it could flood those areas in 120 miles inland. And then of course, if that goes, if that could then, the shock of that could trigger uh, the San Andreas Fault and it's... Now, uh, why do we talk about this? Yeah. It's not because we're trying to scare people. Yeah. It's Doom. because, because no. the Lord Jesus himself told us that in the last days, right. as we approach his second, re his second advent, that we would see earthquakes in diverse places. Right. And he said, these were like birth pangs. Right. Well, anyone who's had a baby or been around someone having a baby knows that those birth pangs get closer and closer together and they get harder and harder. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because again, it's easy when you get onto a topic like this because it is fascinating yeah. um, to focus on the, the, the doom aspect of yeah. it and the adrenaline rush of, oh wow, what would happen if I was friends with a fella in college who discovered the new Madrid Fault, which runs through oh, Missouri yeah. Boot Heel, uh, which is the other side of Missouri from us. But when it went in 1811, mm -hmm. um, it rang church bells in Boston and Washington, D.C. Yes. It was basically uninhabited by white people at the time. Uh, Native Americans were you know, still living in the area. But uh, th so there aren't many records as to what happened right there at the fault line. But it changed the course of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, Mississippi flowed northward to St. Louis for a, mm -hmm. while, for a time. Yep. Um, it would be disastrous now because of the uh, all the brick construction that's taken place in cities like Memphis and St. Louis. Mm -hmm. But you can get caught up in that and caught up in the fear and 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 basically become useless to, yeah. to people around you. But we're not to do that. We're not to exactly worry about right. that part of it. If anything, we are to take this information and seize the day. Right. Because what really matters when Christ returns, whether you're pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, doesn't matter. Whatever it is you believe, he is coming back. Amen. And yes. at some point, each one of us is going to have to explain to the Lord why we either chose not to believe him or we did choose to believe him. Right. And, you know, once you have crossed over either into the next life after his return, or you simply, the, it's the end of your life because every one of us, you know, we all have an end to our life coming at some point. Mm -hmm. At least this mortal coil is going to shuffle off. And I'm so glad. Don't want to be transhumanized. No, no. I, I want to be given an eternal body by I him. don't want the cheap knockoff. No, exactly. That's a really good way to put it. But, uh, you know, we need to seize the day. Yeah. Share the gospel while we can. I, I agree. And, you know, that's one thing I think, too, that um, those who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture get kind of a bad rap that uh, sometimes we are criticized for believing that we're going to get a ticket out of here. And so we don't need to do anything. We're just waiting for our ticket home. No. No. Uh, if you really believe that um, our time is short, it should motivate you to share the good news, make disciples of all nations, share the hope that you have in Christ Jesus with Absolutely. those around you. Absolutely. Well, really quickly, because I th we may have mentioned it, um, back to volcanoes. Yeah. If you love the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> you may have thought, one of these days I'm going to go to New Zealand and I'm going to see all those wonderful hobbit vistas, the mm -hmm. village and the, the beautiful mountains that uh, Jackson used in the backgrounds. Well, Mount Ruapehu, mm -hmm. which is a volcano in in uh, New Zealand that is featured as Mount Doom. Oh, that really is Mount Doom. That's Mount Doom. Oh, I was just joking about that no, before the program. No, it was, it was used as the background for what they probably enhanced with CGI. Yes, yes. That was Mount Doom. Oh. It's, uh, it's an actual vol volcano, and it's uh, starting to... Wake well, up. It last blew in 2007, so yeah. this would not be unheard of. So hikers have been told, stay away. Yeah, well, you wouldn't want to get too so, close to so Mordor anyway. So like any the signal fires. Exactly. You wouldn't want to get too close to Mordor anyway. <laughs> no, you really don't. I, I've said that all along. Don't go. <laughs> stay in Rivendell. There you, that's it. That's it. Just let the world go by. Well, next week, we begin the first of three interviews on Skywatch TV, the main program, leading up to the release of Tom Horn and Chris Putnam's new book, 
the last, the final Roman emperor, the Islamic Antichrist, and the Vatican's the last Roman crusade. The final emperor is here. Yeah, it's it's a compelling book. Yeah, and it 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 rounds off this series of books that they when they first wrote the wrote the first one, I think they had no idea. Yeah, it would end up being a series, but it's an incredible series of yeah. books. Yeah, when you start pulling a thread, just you amazed at what research you uncover. <laughs> and suddenly, that final emperor has new clothes. It, no, exactly. So, <laughs> you don't well, want that. <laughs> next week on Skywatch TV for a complete listing of dates, times, and places to watch Skywatch TV. Log on to Sky. WatchTV.com and look for the top menu bar where it says channel listing. And we gave you the Facebook page. We gave you the email address. So don't forget, by the way, brand new magazine. You can still subscribe. You want to yep. do so quickly because the end of uh, November. No, sorry, not November. Wrong, wrong month. June 24th, I think, is the final day to right. get in on the deal. And that's U.S. and maybe Canada. I'm not sure about Canada. Ask the office people. But international rates are coming. So if you're watching in another country and you want to subscribe to the magazine, we are working out the subscription rates and we're going to make them as friendly as possible. Mm -hmm. But the truth is it's more expensive to ship, to ship across overseas. the ocean. Yeah. Well, we'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But meanwhile, for Sharon Gilbert, I'm Derek Gilbert. Have a blessed weekend and thank you for watching as we keep watch. This is Skywatch TV. Save nearly half off the cover price when you subscribe now to the brand new Skywatch TV magazine. For a limited time from April 24th through June 24th, 60 days only, a five-year subscription to Skywatch TV magazine is just $99. That's more than $75 off the cover price, which is like getting two years for free. Exclusive content, articles on prophecy, discovery and the supernatural from Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, Josh Peck, science updates from Sharon K. Gilbert, geopolitics from yours truly, and guest writers like Pulitzer Prize nominated journalist Troy Anderson, renowned Bible scholar Dr. Michael Heiser, Pentagon advisor Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, and more. But there is more. As an early subscriber, you'll be the first to get this new book from Defender Publishing. I predict what 12 global experts believe you'll see by 2025. This is a $20 value and includes best-selling authors like Joel Richardson, Mark Biltz, Carl Gallops, Tom Horn, Paul McGuire, and more. Find out what they think about the coming war between ISIS and the Vatican, the future of the Temple Mount, and the Ark of the Covenant a worldwide manifestation of angels and the coming age of human hybrids. And we'll also add this DVD, the best of Skywatch TV 2015, a $25 value, including our most compelling interviews from last year, including Chuck Missler, Steve Quayle, the discussion of the Georgia Guidestones with Chris Pinto, and more. All of this together worth more than $200, yours now for just $99, but only through June 24th. Subscribe now, Skywatch TV Magazine. Just call the number on your screen or log on to skywatchtvstore.com.